magbigay na niyang tips sa mga board daters this year? Wag magkram. Wait, may, may tips ba? Wag na wag magkram. Wag din magtrabaho ako nagre review for boards. Ah, uh, tip, wag kayo magdala ng notes sa ano, venue kasi di niya na-open. Wow! Nagdala <laughs> ka? Wag mag overthink. Tip with the S or tip with the what was the first thing? What was the first thing? What was the the Either wala doon yung sagot, or hindi din alam nung prompters. You'll never feel like you're ready. Just do your best. Tapos darating yung date, feel mo parang hindi ka handa, pero gawin mo na lang. Wala ka So in the midst of preparing my application to PRC and everything, I already started studying. Like I said, I'm not the most reliable person to ask about how to study for the boards but my number one tip and all my other co-workers number one tip is find what works the best for you don't try to emulate study tubers or study vloggers way of studying if it doesn't work for you don't force your way into it another thing is don't force your brain into studying if it really doesn't feel like it at that moment in time because otherwise you're just wasting time forcing knowledge on something that doesn't want to absorb it. But again, take accountability. If you're gonna miss this number of hours of studying, make sure that you're gonna make up for it the next time that you're ready to study. So talking about study schedule and everything, my year leading up to October 2022, which is when I take the board exams, was qu quite hectic. So from January to June, I was still sort of like uncertain if I was gonna graduate that year. After the first week of June, during like the second week and everything, that was when I was writing my manuscript. By mid-June, it was kind of confirmed, it was kind of sure that I was gonna graduate already. Towards the end of June, I was already looking for jobs and I applied to my instructor job, to my current job, and I got accepted. So July was me celebrating the fact that I'm finally graduating, and then eventually graduation. And then right after graduation was August, and August was me taking care of stuff that I needed to submit to work. After August is September, so guess what month I started studying? It was September. This is a terrible idea. My attention was divided as well. Not only did I also start working, I also started my grad school as a PhD student, so that's like kind of wild to have like all of those things balancing on top of me and stuff like that. For the entire month of September, my time was divided between analytical chem, physical chem, and inorganic chem. And then for the first two weeks of October, I just speed ran biochemistry and organic chemistry for the last week right before board exams itself just started answering my practice exams for GRE. In hindsight, I actually already did start studying in August, but only a little bit, not really seriously. And I don't think I was in the right mindset yet. Like I wasn't pressured into thinking that, oh, the board exams are still in October. So like, you know, I still have a lot of time. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. But that's what happened. I still passed, but like by the skin of my teeth, so. So now that you know what my schedule is, make sure that your schedule does not look like that, okay? When you're preparing for the boards, make sure you have ample time to study for everything. Literally everything. So when you're strategizing for your studying, make sure to consider the weights of the subtests that you're gonna take for the board exams. So for example, inorganic chemistry and analytical chemistry are both 25% each, meaning you will have to sit the exams for those four hours each. For physical chemistry, that's 20%, so you'll sit the exam for three hours. And then for organic chemistry and biochemistry, those are 15% each, so you will sit those exams 2.5 hours each. For example, you're like me and you're weak in Anakam, like Anakam is really my weakest chemistry. Um, a lot of my time preparing went to Anakam and then went to physical chem because physical chem was also my weakest. And then my next priority was inorganic chemistry because I'm quite alright with inorganic chemistry but since it accounted for a large chunk of my final grade, I figured if I focused on that a little bit then it might carry 
my average a little bit more and that did end up happening so I guess that strategizing did work a little bit for me and then as I mentioned earlier I only speed ran biochemistry and organic chemistry ochem because I kind of do well in ochem exams and then biochem that was my Hail Mary. Yun yung inalay ko na subtest. If you're pressed for time like I was, if your schedule doesn't allow a lot of time for studying for you because you're, you're working, then you should probably focus on your weakest subfields. But if you feel like you do well in all of the fields anyway, then maybe focus on the subtests that contribute a large chunk of percentage to your average. So in terms of like the entire timeline, I feel like you should really have like three to four months of hardcore studying, meaning learning everything, relearning everything, what have you, getting new knowledge. But at the end of that, two weeks right before the board exams itself, you should set aside that time for answering your mock exams, your practice tests, your GRE chem practice tests just so that you have a better idea of what the board exams are like. I'm really glad that I did answer my practice tests, especially from GRE Chem, because as it turns out, a lot of the questions were adapted from that. They were like really similar um, based on experience. So if you really want to have a good idea of what the board exams are like, what the questions are like, answer GRE Chem practice exams. Like I keep mentioning, I was studying, I was working, I was a PhD student while I was preparing for the boards. So with that, if you're capable, please don't take up any other extra responsibility while you're preparing for the boards. Honestly, um, if I had the option to not work while I was preparing for the boards, I wouldn't have, but I really needed to. Um, a lot of my friends who weren't required to work while they were preparing for the board I think fared really well in the board exam so yeah if you're fortunate enough invest all of your time and all of your effort and all of your focus in studying for the boards if getting a high score in the boards is a priority for you so some study techniques that worked really well for me were first coffee naps what my weekdays looked like while I was working and preparing for the boards was that I would work the entire morning well into the afternoon and then have dinner early in the evening and then chug a shitload of coffee right before I go down for my evening nap. And then once I wake up from that evening nap, it's usually 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. and then I'm good to go studying until like 3 a.m. Then at 3 a.m. I go to bed and then I just repeat that cycle for like a month and it was the most terrible time in my life. But it really worked for me since I was really pressed for time. So coffee naps if you're into coffee like I am. Next was the Pomodoro technique. It worked really well for me. I know it doesn't work for a lot of people. Some people say it's actually quite bad for you when you're studying, but it worked really well for me. Next were flashcards. So I did do flashcards and I also were blessed with some hand-me-down flashcards from one of my seniors. Thank you, Atemora. Um, and they were really good flashcards. The ones that I made, not so much, but Atemora's were really good. So those really helped me for like just last minute flipping through on the day before and the day of the exams. My recommendation when you're doing flashcards, do your flashcards in your first pass of studying so that you'll just refer back to them again and again. And the last technique that I did was body doubling. I love body doubling. I love studying for long periods of time with someone around me, especially like a group of people. But for most of the time during our preparation, it was usually me and Isa because I really like studying with Isa. I didn't have someone to study with or I didn't have a friend with me. I would pull up a YouTube video and usually that worked really well for me. I love Eve Cornwell, Brianna Kwan, study tube content. I really love that. So it really helped me like pretend that I was working with someone and apparently it works really well for people with ADHD so so those were the study techniques that I did um, that really helped me so some additional tips that I just wanted to mention was number one believe in yourself a lot of the stuff that carried me through the board's experience was delusion and the manifestation that I'm gonna be an RCH at the end of this so in addition to believing in yourself I also believe in the saying, fake it till you make it. Me and Isa believe in that saying very much, faking it till you make it, very important, especially if you're someone like me who has great imposter syndrome, you know? Until now, I really don't feel like a real scientist, don't feel like a real chemist, but I do have my license and everything, so I guess I faked it till I made it. Mm -hmm.